So if you look at this chart that shows the role of physical activity in health, particularly cardiovascular health, look at the number of people that are affected by poor physical activity. If you look at the very last column, for health, three times a week, 20 minutes, or, or in aiming for that 30 minutes of moderate activity most days of the week, almost 60% of the population is at risk. Only about one-third of the population does regular, moderate, or vigorous physical activity. And so another, you know, two-thirds is doing either nothing or they're very sporadic. They're maybe working out one or two days a week and they're not quite meeting the guidelines. So we want to really work on that because if you look at the numbers where it says the risk ratio, so that's how much your risk increases in that, um, by that factor. So one is normal. So if you're looking at levels around two, that means your risk is doubled. So you can see not being physically inactive is the same as having high blood pressure, uh, poor cholesterol, and is a little less than smoking. Smoking is actually worse as well. So, but the actual numbers of people affected by physical inactivity are much, much larger than the number of people who are affected by um, smoking, for example. So it is something that we can do, and it's an easy thing we can do if we want to promote public health and reduce people's risk of chronic disease. These numbers on this slide should not look um, shocking to you. We've covered some of this previously in class, that about one-third of the U.S. are overweight and about, uh, you know, two-thirds are overweight and one-third are obese. Again, BMI greater than equal to 30. That um, obesity has tripled in students in the last, uh, in kids in the last 20 years in youth, 16%, so gone from about 5 or 6% to um, about 18 percent it's associated with the rise in diabetes and not you know especially in u.s but also globally and you know trying to get people to get their weight down and get them to a bmi level of 25 and you've probably all seen those slides with the maps for cdc and they show the different states and how obesity has increased since the late 80s through now and now there are very few states there really are no states that have under 20% obese. Even Colorado, which has been the best state, has higher levels of obesity than what they would like. And of course, South Carolina is just under 30% of the population obese, but we're literally hanging out there at about 29 point something. So, you know, you know we definitely have ways to go. Um, some recent data have also indicated that perhaps obesity is leveling off. That's good. But the bad news is everything's still too high. But we've got to stop it before we can start to reverse it. So that's probably a good sign. Let's transition into risk factor screening, pre-participation screening. I know a lot of this is covered in other classes, exercise testing and prescription, and special populations. But the, these are based on the ACSM guidelines, which if you want to get certified, you're going to have to be really comfortable with these. And so the risk classification, so they used to call that risk stratification, and if you've got that on your handout that I gave you, change that to classification. And this is what's really going to determine who needs medical clearance, who needs to get a physician permission, who needs to have a GXT, graded exercise test, with ECG monitoring based on their cardiac risk factors or their incidence of disease. And so it's ultimately up to the physician to decide who gets the GXT. So, but um, we're going to use these screening forms and follow the ACSM guidelines for that.